The Dallas-Fort Worth community always says yes to supporting elementary students, and now that yes can win you a brand new 2022 truck. DFWS provides school supplies to more than 78,000 students across Texas. Give your yes today by purchasing raffle tickets in our Drive Away for Education truck raffle sponsored by Thomas J. Henry. The grand prize winner will choose from a new Ram, Chevrolet, GMC, Ford, or Nissan truck. Plus, you could win a shopping spree or gas card. Purchase your raffle ticket today at dfws.org. Now, Pickle, it's time for Helpful Honda Mailbag Friday. The North Texas Honda dealers want to help you score on award-winning Honda, just like a rugged and reliable 2023 Ridgeline. Stop by your helpful Honda dealer today or visit ntxhondadealer.com to learn more. I'm coming in with the heat today. I told Man, you I'm back. Man, you are rolling. A rug, what was that? A rugged and reliable Yeah, Honda? a that's rugged what, uh, and uh, reliable. That's what the ladies say about me. Rugged and reliable. Yeah. Well, you're just like the Ridgeline. <laughs> yeah. They call, them Matt. Yeah, they call me the Ridgeline. They call them the Ridgeline, folks. <laughs> Rugged and reliable. Oh, I made, I made broke Pickles me. had a long couple of days, so I made her laugh. That so broke success. Me. <laughs> success. Let's talk a little bit of Thursday action. Get your there questions you go, Pickle. on Facebook, That's YouTube, Twitch, crap. and Twitter. We'll get to that as many as we can up until uh, uh, quarter till. Um, we'll quarter talk a little bit till. about. We'll, talk we'll go till quarter till. That <laughs> sounded. That was Lano very Tepper right country, there. Yeah. Lano Tepper coming out. That was like out. the most country I've heard you. It was good. Like yeah. it. It adds it to resonated the with Pickle. Texas football today, you know? Yeah, it resonated. We're, we're slowly breaking you you're down, <laughs> Cop <Hell> Boy. <laughs> I apologize I to, the, <laughs> to the audience for that slip. <laughs> I was trying to say something other than 1245. <laughs> anyway. Love it. Um, let's talk last night. So, a couple of results from last night that, that caught my eye. One of them, the big game last night, was Galena Park, North Shore, and Humble at Tascacita. Mm-hmm. Tascacita. North Shore. <laughs> Keep it going. <laughs> <laughs> She's on one now. Yeah, I've been off for She's two up days. now. I'm ready. Well, Pickles, not off, Pickles but fired up I haven't now. been on the show. Humble <laughs> at Tascacita. <laughs> Tascacita. And Galena Park, North Shore, mm-hmm. played in a football contest last oh, night. Oh, God. <laughs> um... <laughs> And I've spent the better part of the last 18 hours, I guess it hasn't been 18 hours, you know, whatever, amount of time, mm-hmm. trying to parse how I feel about that result. Same. Because it's, it's, it's hard because North Shore won. Against and it was top 10 team. And it wasn't a fluke. Like, no. they made the plays when it mattered, especially on defense and special teams. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They made the plays. That special teams play you sent in the slack. I was watching live, but oh, my was, God. Oh, yeah. Um, they made the plays on defense and special teams to, to win the game. But I also got to see the North Shore offense without Caleb Bailey against a good defense. And, I mean, there's no other They're way limited. They're limited. Yeah. They're, they're very limited. limited. And so it's it's one of those things that they won last night against a top 10 team. Do I think that they could play three top 10 teams in three weeks and win them? Mm. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I'm... I. It's 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 weird that they beat a top ten team on the road, and yet I come away from that being like. I'm to not real play sure. devil's advocate, though, I think that we're not used to ever seeing North Shore in a position where they really have to figure out a way to grind out, like get a really gritty win like that. Mm-hmm. So it does show uh, again. Do if they went next to three top ten teams, could they do it? Probably not. But two, it at least shows that they have stomach for a fight, which is a team that that successful doesn't always have that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But let me push back on one thing, though. Mm-hmm. I think we have seen them grind out wins, specifically December of 2021. That went over North over Duncanville in the title game. The freshman quarterback. The freshman yeah. quarterback, yeah. they did grind it out. Right. So your point's well taken because yeah. you're right. I guess it's normally with, they have, with, with the injury that they right, have. Normally right they now. have star power enough to make up for it. They don't have. It's, this is a fundamentally different North Shore team yeah. that's having to do it because they're not rugged up front on either side. This is a relatively smallish North Shore team By compared to. They're not as rugged up front. Mm-hmm. And I think. That's the and they don't have the star playmaker other than Amador, who they've taken him from his best position and put him at another. So you basically have a you're have down a downgrade. And a half you're downgrading at two positions because yeah. you take your best wide receiver and you have to replace your quarterback with him, who he's obviously not Caleb mm-hmm. Bailey. So I, I think North Shore is a limited team offensively mm-hmm. as they stand right now. Now will Amador improve? I mean, I guess he could in a couple of weeks. He's, he's improved from now mm-hmm. to when he first took over, but is he going to improve enough to make them markedly a different offensive team in the playoffs? I, I don't know. I think for North Shore in the playoffs, barring Caleb Bailey making a miraculous miraculous return to the lineup, 
I think you're going to have to see North Shore. I don't want to say smoke and mirrors, but they're going to have to grind out wins but what's, in this manner. But what's so against elite teams? What's so interesting is that if you wanted to put to the test the importance of coaching and coaching staffs, mm-hmm. isn't this like this? Isn't this just like the the scientific ideal of that experiment in the sense that you're giving it to the North Shore staff, which mm-hmm. is one of the one of the very best coaching staffs in America. I'll put it up against any high school football staff in America, they right? Do a great job, yeah. For them to figure it out week by week, they're going to go in the lab and they're going to figure it out. Like that's what's so interesting cuz like right now, so let's just say that like their three biggest games hypothetically, hypothetically would be a regional final against Atascosita, right? Mm-hmm. So a rematch. Mm-hmm. It would be a state semifinal against Westlake on the road. And it would be a uh, and it would be a a, re- a regional I'm sorry state championship game let's say against Duncanville okay mm-hmm. right now if if you were to go by our rankings that's how it would break down yeah all three of those teams the more I've thought about it all three of those teams are relatively limited themselves offensively mm-hmm. they're not there's not a flamethrower among them right no. Atascacita we just saw last week or last night got got hold got held to to you know basically one touchdown I mean if North Shore is gonna hold you know, Duncanville or mm-hmm. Westlake in a hypothetical matchup to 13 Two points. Yeah. They, right, they can win. Touchdown Dave now, can grind the rest of that out. Now, yeah, touchdown now, Dave now. is a man who makes touchdowns. But that's the thing. Doing it three times in three weeks. That's a tough, that's a lot, that's lot a to hard, ask. That's a tough ask. A lot, lot to ask. So it's, they are a fascinating team moving forward. I'm, I'm certainly not throwing dirt on the team that has won three titles in four years. No. Okay? And not coaching staff, which is incredible. But this, it's, we were sitting here last year after December, and we said that that was the best coaching job John Kay had ever done. He may have to be even better mm-hmm. this week. This I agree. Year, which is interesting. Uh, elsewhere, our own Mallory Hartley was at the Star in Frisco. The game Star. of the night. For the game of the night, mm-hmm. as Frisco Reedy survives Frisco Heritage. Heritage had this game in the bag. This game was done, and they got, uh, they got Michigan stated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> with a Michigan oh, State fan the in, the, in, the, yeah. in the building yeah. Yeah. Uh, as you get a blocked punt returned for uh, or scooped up for a touchdown to give Reedy the and with 22 seconds left something like that it was like, less than 30 seconds less than 30 I, seconds to win that, the game if they, is that the, well, they're the first 10 and 0 team in the state by the way congratulations is that the Reedy. point where you take where the intentional safety is a player I mean I, I don't remember where they were exactly on the but they were like the, they were like the, he was, the 25 he was, the punter was on the 5 yard line yeah I was gonna say, okay, no, so it was way further so back they're, so they're on is like the, that the 17 point, you know you're up 5 Mm-hmm. Do you do you tell the punter, hey, run around for a few seconds and then run out of the back of the end zone and run five or six? Like that might that's the point I think maybe where you do. I mean, it's it's, it's hate, they were I, up by they were up five. five? Thirty one twenty. I'm looking yeah. at it. Yeah, yeah the punters I mean, you don't feet were get, on the five yard line. The the counterpoint to that would be if you're up five and you give them two points, then they, they can field goal ties. Yeah, field goal ties. Yeah, yeah and you're taking you off from your be, twenty. I guess the one place you'd have to be up six. I yeah, think six it, would be would be six six would be ideal that you absolutely do it. Yeah, five. It's a 50-50 shot. It's easy to it's easy to second guess because honestly, like you don't anticipate a a, a pump block, right? Mm-hmm. Now you've you know. Now well, that, I, I that mean, said, that said, I I would need to go back and watch it. I don't know how many gunners they had, but mm-hmm. I basically like I'm in max protect. Do you know what I mean? Because the number one thing you've got to do is get this punt away. Well, that wasn't. I mean that that was the crazy ending of the game, but that game was the sloppiest game in the entire world. Like there were at least four turnovers, I think, by Heritage, and then there were that many. Like Mallory had texted me about halfway through, and she was like, "The amount of turnovers I've seen in this game is." I remember absurd. her saying she thought it was a sloppy, sloppy. Let me see if I can yeah. find this. So uh, the fact that it ended that way was like par for the course at that point. For our friends of the Dallas Morning News, there were six turnovers total. Yeah. Reedy, Reedy turned the ball over four times. Reedy did it. Okay. Mm. Reedy turned the ball. Reedy won with 294 yards of offense. Um. I'll just I'll come out and say it. I am skeptical of Frisco ISD as a whole. Maybe outside of like Emerson, <laughs> which is weird because the newest one with no seniors. Um, yeah, Reedy's Reedy it's a down year in How's, Frisco. What about That's Independence? Tw- Independence was doing. Independence got a nice one over right. like Dallas. They're, State too. I mean, they're they're fine. They're, uh, th- we forget about the D two schools because right. they're not playing the other Frisco. Mm-hmm. I think Frisco, especially in D one, maybe is more balanced this mm-hmm. year. But they don't have that elite team like Lone Star's been the past few years. Now Reedy's ten and zero, and they don't need to apologize for being ten and zero. No, you're, but you're, we're going to find out quick because we that's a, a, they're looking at a possible second round matchup with Lancaster, and, and that's 
Yeah, that would be tasty. Because I got I got asked on the radio this morning about who the who's the team to beat in five A D one region two, mm-hmm. and I think it's I, in my opinion it is very clearly Longview. Yes, who I, took care of business last night? Correct. Yeah, they, they that was like. Like seven nothing in the first quarter, and then like the next time I looked, it was the third quarter. It was forty two like, to three. Yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. It was like, oh, okay. Longview, be um, Longview. They'll do that. Um, but the thing, I think I've come around to the idea that Lancaster's the second best team in the region too. Yeah, I think. So. I, I mean, think I'm. I think I'm there. Now that's with all due respect to Mansfield Timberview, who hasn't done anything wrong. You know what I mean? They're number two in the rankings. They're just in the position Lancaster was in last two yeah, years, where they've in that where, district where yeah. they're just not getting. I mean, Timberview. We'll we'll know a little bit more. Timberview plays Richland tonight. Mm-hmm. Maybe Richland is f- capable of pushing Timberview a little bit. Maybe, so we'll yeah. see. Yeah, That's we'll see. probably the second best team in the district. Yeah. Um, okay. And then there's one other result um, that I want to talk about, and then we can get to some questions. Um, was the LBJ East Side game, which was getting some some run on Twitter last night? Yeah, you because see. of the score. Yeah. So the final score was uh, LBJ was uh, won at um, uh, ninety six nothing, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh, it was eighty nine nothing at half. They were going. They starting the second quarter. They had running clock. Um, this is for me. There are no winners here. Exactly. Yeah. There are no winners here. Yeah. That like we know Jamal Fenner. Like we know him. Mm-hmm. And he's not going out there trying to embarrass Ish people. Ish said it perfectly on Twitter. Yeah. What do you say? I'm, I'm sorry. The one Wait, you the, quote when you quote tweet. Yeah, yeah, his, yeah. his thread. It was, yeah. It's it is a it's an unfortunate situation um, that they got bumped it's a up. Perfect to, storm of bad scenarios. Five A D two. They got moved up to five A D two against Jamal Fenner's wishes. Correct. Yeah. The um, LBJ football staff had a preference to stay four A. To stay four A, but they got moved up to five A D two to be with the Austin school, so they get put into a district with Austin ISD, and they're just. Guys are just way better than them. It's you know, Austin. You have, you have LBJ being at the highest point in their program history, Correct. and the rest of Austin ISD being probably in five A at least being as bad as they've ever been. I mean, like our, even McCallum is not. I mean, they, they had a run a couple of years ago, but, but that's, they're that not was the good. outlier. Yeah, they're and, then, and the. Um, I mean, literally, guys. Last night, like Eastside in our computer rankings is the is the last ranked team in and they were playing the worst of the worst Austin IST Correct. teams yeah. right now the east side's really not, they're, 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 they're struggling they're, they're struggling not good. like they were uh, Craig Way was on the call last night he said that they had more cheerleaders and palm squad members than they had football players yeah right there are it's a team that it's a program that's struggling with numbers remember they didn't even feel the team the last couple of years yeah. and stuff so they're trying to retrench and for LBJ I'm 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 simp- I'm simp- like obviously it's it sucks for east side it sucks I'm not here to tell you it doesn't suck I am also sympathetic to LBJ because they are put into an impossible situation where they can only look like the bad guy. Yeah. And, and they've only got like 30 players at most. I think the game I did two weeks ago, they had 28 kids suited no. out. So they don't, they can't rotate in no. four string running backs. So they don't have a four string running don't. back. They have to like, they're, they have a backup running back basically. And that's yeah. probably it. And like, I mean, so if you didn't, I mean, basically with 10.30 left in the in the third quarter, they went up 96 nothing. They, they Basically, it sounds like they returned the opening kickoff of the second half. The only time that Eastside kicked off, they returned to the two-yard line. And I think the guy stepped out on purpose. Yeah. Um, and then, like, what are you going to do? Ask a freshman running back not to score? Yeah. So he scores, makes 96 nothing, And then for the their final, they had three more possessions after that. They kneeled it three times. They punted. Yeah. And... That I mean, because because look, I like, and what's funny, we go on and on about round numbers and how round numbers are a construct, but like 100 points is like a shocking number. Yes, 96 is a shock. Shocking number. enough, yeah. Shocking yeah. enough, but 100 is going to catch like national news. Yeah, and so I know for a fact that's not true. I haven't talked with Jamal Fenner. I know Jamal Fenner. I can tell you, I think confidently. That he's not out there trying to embarrass people. He doesn't want a hundred. No, no. And and we we also the other thing is you and I know this. Tonight, tonight, there are no fewer than a dozen teams in Texas that will play tonight that could have a hundred if they wanted it. For sure, they could have yeah. it. But the games are going to end fifty six nothing, sixty three three, sixty three seven, and you'll never you'll never think about it. Um, it's just an unfortunate situation. Yeah, it's a perfect storm of, of just bad scenarios yeah, there. So, anyway. feel I feel for for obviously the East Side kids, mm-hmm. and I do feel I, I know Jamal Fenner in his heart. And does, he, no. I don't think I think you leave last night. Yeah, I don't think he left the stadium feeling good last no. night. And it sucks for them, and the, because they won the game, you should be happy about yeah. a, about a district win. But I know he didn't leave feeling good because there was nothing that really they could do about that. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Do we have questions, Pickle. Yes, your thoughts on Fullshear and Manville tonight? 
Yeah, it's a really important game. Um, I think for you know, Fulshire got off to that really hot start. They've they've cooled off a little bit. Um, I think part of it was that the 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 strength of schedule um, kind of increased for them. Ten five AD one is tough. Yeah, uh, five AD ten five AD one. Um, they 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 lose that close game to Angleton. Uh, but then they win a close game over Magnolia West. Huge win for them. Uh, they they finish. They got to finish strong. They're at Manville tonight, and then they're uh, they host Richmond Foster next week. Yeah. So they're, we'll know exactly where they stand. They either they're gonna need to win one of these games at least, mm-hmm. or if they if they lose out, they're gonna need some help. I mean, because that district is so tightly bunched for those for mm-hmm. those push that third and fourth spot. Yeah. I, now I that win over Magnolia West is huge yes, because that's nice the team in their presently in fifth in fifth place. And so, but if they if they drop both these. And and Magnolia, what, who's Magnolia West finished with? Magnolia West finishes Angleton with Angleton if they beat Angleton, and then they beat Friendswood, which yeah. are both. Friendswood's a winnable game. I think Angleton's going to win the district. Personally, hmm. they got the head to head on Manville. That's true, you know. But I mean, Angleton does. You know, they have the, they have a loss to Foster, and then they have Magnolia West tonight. That game yeah. that. The, I know we're supposed to be talking about Manville and, and, and Fulcher, but that game between Angleton and Magnolia West is yeah. really important. Ful- if Angleton wins that game, they're probably getting the number one seed. Yes, yeah, I so, would agree. I, Manville's a bit of a mystery box too. They like are. I don't have a great read on Manville at all. When they play gr- when they play well, they're really good, and then they've also just like they've laid a couple of eggs, especially yeah. offensively. Yeah, like so. offensively, their offense will no show, and they're and, super and they've, sur- young on they've that survived a couple of them. They no showed against Friendswood. Yeah. They they more lost or less to no- Angleton. Yeah, they lost to Angleton. They more or less they, uh, Shadow Creek in the opener. I'm willing to week one that thing. And, and Shadow Creek's a yeah. top 15, 6, 18. And then so. and then Foster. Yeah. Uh, you know they they you know, they they only score twenty eight, but they win. Like, yeah. You know, Manville. It's just, I don't have a good read on Manville going into the playoffs. Yeah, don't have a good read on. I them. agree. I think I think for them, just the margins are really like yeah. really narrow, and so like they're gonna need to get their best game. You know, as many weeks as they survive. So anyway, what's next, pickle? I think I li- by the way I, th- I think I like Manville. I think I like Manville. I do too. Anyway, what's next? Um, thoughts on Port Lavaca Calhoun going to the playoffs? Huge win for them last week, beating Beeville. Yeah, man, that, that was- district's another district that's really everybody's kind of tight. Calhoun's like one and seven. That was their first win of the yeah. season last week. They're one and seven, but I think they're really young. I, I but I think so. They get Rockport tonight. That's a pick'em game. Yeah, and then they finish at Floresville, which I think is also a pick game. <laughs> that yeah, everything I think Lavernia has yes. kind of step established themselves as the district favorite. They beat Beeville tonight. They're they're going to be the outright district champs. Nobody can catch them. But I think those other four teams are it's it's a battle royale for those last. But three this spots. is also I also think because because Calhoun's super young, super super young, and, and they they haven't been blown out of a lot. They've no, been close. They've been kind of they've had some bad luck with injuries and just kind of weird. It's been one of those years for them. So they have a six point loss, a seven point loss, a seven point loss, a six point loss. Like they yeah. like they they've been close in a lot of games. Yeah, and, and they're finding and that's it. the mark of a young team. And the other thing is, like you think about that offense. That offense is like it is. It, you have to learn it yourself. And and there's no like it's only t- it's only with time and practice and stuff yeah. like that and so it would not be a surprise if they've just gotten steadily better offensively and now if they play their best game they can win these last two and get in the playoffs and mm-hmm. it's like oh okay cool we're third place in the district see you we'll see in the playoffs like it's a really they're an interesting dynamic that like normally a team that was zero and seven a week ago you'd be like they're off the radar yeah. see ya but like they're a team certainly to, I mean they got to win out basically but like if they do that. Opportunity there for Richard in. Whitaker. Yeah. What's next? Um, another district that's kind of it's pretty set at the top, uh, but the bottom section is is interesting when it comes to playoff, and that's seven five A Division One. So the question was, will uh, Lufkin be able to make it in? And technically, they could, but most of it would depend on other people doing stuff. Like, yeah, I'm not even sure Lufkin can at this point get in. If if McKinney North was to drop one of their next two games against Forney or I don't remember who the other one is, I think McKinney North has to lose. Both okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Let me allow me to just like let me be the turd in the punch bowl here. Let me be the turd in the punch bowl. They close against Lancaster. Lufkin yeah. clo- closes against Lancaster. I think they are sizable underdogs in that game. Yes. But they've already basically solidified their second place spot. I mean, Lancaster has maybe. If, yeah, maybe. So, so maybe they. It, maybe would, they, it really depends on McKinney yeah, North. I don't. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. But they like, would have to lose both of them. But the I thing think. is that yeah, for but 
but for mathematically they have a shot. Mathematically they have yeah. a shot, but they would need to upset the Lancaster. Next the week. problem for Lufkin to me is they've the teams they're competing with those last two spots they've lost head to head to, which Forney is McKinney, McKinney North and Forney. So th- they got to beat Lancaster number one, and then probably got to hope McKinney North or Forney loses a game that they shouldn't lose. It's it's a lot mathematically possible. I would put it at less than North five. Per- less less than five percent. North closes against North Mesquite, who's bad. Uh, yeah, they're yeah, they're two, I mean, and, they're two six. and six. Yeah, uh, and then Forney closes against Tyler, who's also two and seven. Who's, yeah, so who's probably it, probably unfortunate. I'd, I put it less than five percent at this yeah, point. So yeah, I would agree. That that, that overtime, they're they're going to rue the. Oh, they had a big lead on McKinney North. Mm-hmm. They lost an over. That, that's that's going to come that's, back and bite Lufkin in the rear end. I agree. Yeah. What's next, pickle? Um. Battle of the Dogs, who you got, Bernie or Somerset? I think this game's really under the radar. Um, I like this game a lot, mm-hmm. um, specifically because, like, this is it's it's so rare that we get to spotlight and the best game in San Antonio is a small school game, right? But I think that's I think that's the case here. Um, this is a this is a Bernie team whose offense has been excellent. I think it's Jackson Bays B A I Z E. Maybe Bayzie, yes. and then his his brother Braden Bayes is is a is a, a senior wide receiver. Mm-hmm. He's and they got a great connection. Um, for Somerset, this has been a really nice turnaround for Coy Detmer over the last couple of years. You remember twenty nineteen, uh, two and seven, twenty twenty two and seven, and then yeah. last year eight and three. Was it twenty nineteen or twenty twenty when his dad died, passed away? He was the head coach. I think it was nineteen. Maybe. Yeah, so they're dealing with kind of that mm-hmm. transitional. I think Coy Detmer's firmly established and yeah. got his program in place there, and I think Somerset's starting to reap the benefits of that. Yeah, I think that the Somerset team COVID. I think twenty twenty they took COVID. It was it they they got a late start. It was just kind of a weird. If you like tight ends, though, this is the game because the Hendricks boys both play tight ends mm-hmm. for yeah. uh, for Bernie, and then it's pro style for Somerset. Oh, yeah. so that'll be yeah. there's a lot of tight end action going on. You have a lot of, you, have a lot of uh, you know a lot of you know, 12 person. Yeah, back there. there you go. Uh, the other thing I would say is the real strength on strength matchup is this Bernie offense against the Somerset defense, which is playing really well right now. Yeah. Somerset's, Somerset's defense, really good up front. Yeah. Somerset's on Somerset's both sides huge. of the ball. Really good up front. Yeah. They got some like six, seven, 300 yeah. pounder. The on kid the committed line. to rice. Gallegos. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Philip yeah. Gallegos. So they got some beef on them. So I think Bernie wins the game, but I think yeah. it's gonna be close. I think Somerset's a kind of a dark horse contender region. For I think, them. yeah, I think they're, I think they're, they're Wiley. I, I think yeah. they're, they're a team to not Wiley, Texas. I mean like Wiley, W I L E Y. Um, anyway, what's next? Pickle? Thank you for the clarification there. Um, let's see. Hang on. Uh, 3A Division One, Region 4. Dark Horses or Sleepers. Oh, is that just the question? Yes. 3A Division One, Region Period. 4. Period. Uh, um, dark Horses or Sleepers for the playoffs. Lano! I didn't even think about that when I started reading it. <laughs> they're not a dark. They're, they're one <laughs> they're of the not, favorites. Not, they are no. the favorites. I think, I think Lano and Edna are your two Lano favorites. Lano and Edna. Yeah. It, um, if you're looking for a dark horse, I got two. Universal City Randolph, the Rohawks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they very much tested. And Jordanton. Those Jordanton. are my two kind of dark horses. I would go, yeah, I would say Randolph is the best dark horse candidate. Yeah. I'll throw Goliad in there too. Goliad's, Goliad. Uh, They're tricky. They are tricky. And they play, so they have three losses. Uh, they lost to, they have three losses by a combined um, ba, 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 17 points. Yeah, I know one of them was a close loss to Edna. Yeah. yeah. They, lost to, they lost to Edna 21 to 7 last week, which yeah. is. Real, I mean, their defense is really good. They keep them. The, the question is like, can the offense like do enough? That's mm-hmm. really the question for them. Uh, they should win out and and finish second in that or finish third in that district behind uh, Edna and Industrial. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm a real uh, goalie adds a sleeper that you know defense travels mm-hmm. and and their defense is going to be really good in in the playoffs. So that would be a sleeper. But yeah, I think I think you're right. I think Lano and Edna are your, are your favorites there. I'd love to see Lano versus Edna. I think it'd be a fun matchup. What's next, pickle? Um, who are the two teams other than Duncanville that you could see coming to AT and T Stadium from the left side of the bracket? Let me tell you the the computer. We like Lano a lot more than the computer does. Really? Computer's not a believer. Hmm. Computer's well, got them. The computer pick, is wrong. Computer's got them yeah. fourteenth. I'm gonna fight the computer. Yeah. Computer's got them fourteenth. I'm gonna put comfortably the com- behind. Evan. I'm gonna put the computer out yeah. in the war on weather tonight and, and watch it go. go. Okay, so what was the question? Uh, Duncanville left side of the so region one region basically uh, region, region one region two. Who out, who outside of Duncanville could be a contender? First thing I'll say is region one this year. Got like, it. Division two in region one is going to be stronger than yes. I think in region division one. With South Lake Carroll and and uh, South Lake Carroll. 
probably very, I would say very likely mm-hmm. now going to the mm-hmm. Division Two bracket, and then guys Dyer, locked in, and then Byron Nelson, Byron Nelson. Highland Park. It's mm-hmm. pretty region. Division two and region one's lost. Region one has a lot of question marks in division yeah. one. Like I could see North Crowley mm-hmm. making yep. a run. Louisville. 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 Yeah. I, I think, I think it's a lot Those more wide open. I, I don't, but I, I think whoever comes out of region one is going to be a significant underdog to, mm-hmm. to Duncanville or if someone else comes out of region two, two teams, I think that I would look at in region two to come out that could give Duncanville the best challenge would be Cy Ranch mm-hmm. and Spring Westfield. Yeah, Westfield and always. Because Westfield always just matches up up, up front yeah, pretty well. Yeah, and last time Westfield and Duncanville. I hope Westfield does not employ the same strategy against Duncanville they employed the last time, which was talk a bunch of trash pregame, because yeah. then they got beat like 51 to nothing. Yeah, I remember that. Highly rec- don't recommend doing that. If you play was that the Bill. time we had a guy in our comments talking about how they were going to smoke? No, that was Westfield and Longview. Westfield and Longview. And then he then he then he disappeared then from he the comments. Yeah, he, we never he saw just, him no again. Westfield. Yeah, it was in Belton, and they I, pregame we had it on Texan Live, and pregame they were chirping, and Duncanville was like, "Bad okay. idea, yeah. bad idea, coach. Don't recommend it." No. Um. All right. What's next? Watch games on TexanLive.com. Um. Thoughts on the job James Williams is doing at Fort Bend Marshall, being in a tougher district and posting their. Uh, fifth straight district I, I, shutout. I, I, I know he's happy. He I, was happy about the district realignment and said we, we saw him at seven I'm on gl- seven. I'm we, glad we finally see Fort Ben Marshall get tested a little bit. I've like, been, <laughs> and I think I think that's going to bode really well for them going into the playoffs. Yeah, because the, that's always what tripped him up. <laughs> favorite in Region Three right now in Division One and Division Two is Fort Ben Marshall. And I, if you at, you're asking me right now, five A Division Two state championship game is going to be South Oak Cliff and Fort Ben Marshall today. I, would, I think I would. That's agree. my state championship game. I would agree. Um, well, I. I've, I've said it before. They're doing a hell of a job. I've said my piece about James James, uh, James Williams before. I'll say it again. I think he's one of the most underrated coaches in, in the state. I think he what he does year in and year out and like and 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 again, I've gone on this soliloquy before, so if you've heard this, I apologize. But like, I think people look at the playmakers they have and they assume that it's just all talent, and it's like. I think that really discredits his coaching yeah. staff. Same thing happens at South Oak Cliff with Jason Todd. Same things happens at North Shore with John Kay. Uh, like they had these. Uh, same thing happens with Reginald Samples mm-hmm. and at Duncanville. That like yes, they have tremendous talent, but they are also very sound. Yeah. Like w- like like Marshall is so sound in their and, in their. And game. one of his proteges, OG Fagan, is the head coach. He's former former Marshall mm-hmm. OC. He's doing a heck of a job at Cy, uh, Cy Springs. He is. He could he's got them the, in the playoff mix, and they've been a bottom feeder in Cy Fair ISD for a while. Haven't made the playoffs since '03, I think. Yeah, and he, so they're doing a great. They're, they're right in the real thick shot. of it. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, I agree. What's next, Pickle? Um. Oh, Dale was his name. The guy from Spring Dale. Westfield. Yeah. Thank you, Miss Miss Yale. Yeah. Where is Dale? Dale Singletary. Dale. Yeah. Wherefore art there, Dale? Yeah, we miss you, Dale. Amarillo Tascosa versus Lubbock Cooper is basically a toss-up. What makes this game projected to be so close? Um, uh, the Cooper defense specifically. I think both defenses. I think both defenses. I think that I think the computers got it right simply because I don't think there's going to be more than like 23 points scored by one team. Mm-hmm. It's going to be a rock fight. Like this is this is Iowa football. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like both offenses are. Okay. The yeah. Cooper offensive line is pretty good. They've got some yeah, guys really on it. Yeah, they're Cooper's really good up really front. Yeah, they're really good up front. Like that, I think that's not, going like to that be Cooper the Cooper O line against Tascosa D line with Avion Carter. Mm-hmm. That's going to be that's, a that's a war. war. Yeah. And but like the thing about the thing about Cooper this year, this year's Cooper team is I don't think they're explosive. Like I don't think I don't think they have like if you're going to be really good up front. What ma- let's put it this way: what makes Franklin so dangerous is that they're big up front and they're physical up front, and then they've also got explosive playmakers who turn three yard gains into thirty yard gains. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Tascosa has that this year, or Cooper rather has yeah, that this year. I don't think so. And and Tesc and, and Cooper or rather and Tascosa is always happy to just grind you down. So I just think this game's got. 24 21 written all and over it's gonna it. It's going to be cold and rainy in it's West gonna Texas. It's it's yes. going to fit both these teams' personalities really well. This I think is, it's going to be a, a if you like old school, you yeah. know, throwback football, this is your This game. is throwback football yeah. for sure. So I think it, I I just think the computer's got it right simply because like I don't know if either of these teams unless one of the teams turns the ball over six times. Yeah. Like I don't know if one of these teams is capable of blowing the other team out. Like a 14 point game in this one would be a relative blowout cons- considering the defense. Style play, yeah. yeah. All right, what's next, Pickle? Um, six man action. What are your thoughts on Erion County versus Menard? Erion County versus Menard. Okay. Well, Concho hipster, Valley action there. Hipster game uh, the yeah, I think Erion County's a, a bit underrated. They are they're undefeated to uh, to start the year. 
their real signature win was when in week two when they went back and, and they beat Spur, which is a win that I think has aged pretty well. Um, Menard at six and two, they've made a nice transition to, to six man football, and it's been it's been solid for them. I am, and their two losses, by the way, are pretty decent losses: Garden City and, and San Marcos Baptist, which was at one point a ranked six man private school team. Um, I am. I lean towards Erie and County, especially at home. The question for me is going to be: Can this Menard offense kind of, kind of keep pace with what's been a pretty high-powered uh, Erie and County attack? There's an Erie and County team that's averaging 69 points a game. So, I would look at that as the real like: Can can uh, Menard go score score? Now, if it's raining, right, and it's going to tamp down scoring, that would that would that would play into Menard's favor. But I still think Erie and County is going to be your favorite in this one. And the favorite two. This is basically, yeah, yeah. This is, oh yeah, this is a district championship game. Everyone else has two losses. So. You want you want to hear a crazy stat that I just saw? Not totally not related to six man football. And here for the crazy stat that you just saw is Matt's stat. Through nine games this year, would you like to guess how many touchdowns Terry Bussey has accounted for? He had nine games. Seven in the first two. Forty nine. Cool. Through nine games. Now let's let's extrapolate that out to. I would, I'd say they're gonna play. You know, li- it's likely they play at least another four games. Yeah, I would say they play. I would let's, say they get I, to the at, at state conservative. Season. Conservatively, they got one more regular season game, and let's say four, three playoff games, just as a conservative estimate. He's averaging like six touchdowns a game. That's we're talking about seventy-five touchdowns. Oh, did you see? I mean, what he did last night yeah. was insane. And if he gets to the semifinals, the state championship, he's gonna be pushing like ninety touchdowns. So he had 230 yards yeah, and four touchdowns just, just in the first half. I just last got night. that stat just now. Just it's, I know I had to derail mailbag, but but that's insanity. So the, so, so the the record for most touchdowns in a season, and remember, passing touchdowns aren't going to help him here. He doesn't get credit for passing. Touchdowns. Okay, this this is probably accounting like, for passing accounting for both, touch. But, yeah. the, but if you're interested, the the, the record is um, is Jonathan Brooks and Jonathan Gray both had 70, 2020 yeah. and 2011. So I think that's. Yeah, I'd be. In, I mean, I'm sure a lot of these oh, 49ers. Well, some of them are. are but passing. at the same time, like, how much are they passing in these, yeah. in these blowouts? Right? Yeah, it's crazy. So, yeah, it's just insane. Anyway, he's, he's, going de- on, he's going on defense. He's going on special teams. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's crazy. totally derailed that. Anyway, what's next? We have one more football question and then a couple non football questions. Okay. But we'll round it out with another district that might be flying under people's radars, uh, <laughs> which I know that y'all have a personal vendetta against one of the teams. But District 6 3 Division 1 is really fun because it's going to come down to Jefferson, Atlanta, and Tatum are all clearly in their spots here, like of trying to figure out who's playing who. But tonight, Tatum and Jefferson are playing. What's your thoughts on that? Because I know. That Atlanta gonna, has gonna, burned you too many times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna write a strongly worded letter to Tyler Morton. <laughs> yeah, well, and Atlanta, Tyler Morton's done a good job He's at Atlanta this job. year. Yeah, uh, Tatum and Atlanta will play next they week. Clo- yeah, Tatum closes with Jefferson and Atlanta. So, um, I think we're gonna learn a lot about kind of how those three match up just with tonight's game because we'll yeah, get so a, we'll get a measuring stick. It's because, a real round robin. You know, because Jefferson's mean? already played Atlanta, beat him by eight. So clearly, Atlanta has made strides this year. Jefferson oh. could secure it tonight with the winner. Yeah, I mean, Atlanta, you have to talk, Atlanta was he's zero and ten job. last year. No, he's done a great job. And they're I'm six and two. Him. I'm mad at him. Yeah. I'm going to be mad at Tyler Morton, so, Coach Morton. I'm mad at you. It's I, good to see I, the rabbits I swore, back. I swore off Atlanta forever, and now he's doing good things. Now, Atlanta, now they hopped right back in because your heart. of the talent <laughs> they had. They're like the perfect mascot with because Atlanta has always like been a track powerhouse, mm-hmm. and they're the rabbits. Mm-hmm. So it, it, mm-hmm. this goes perfectly. I'll, oh. I'll just say this. I like, like Tatum tonight, by the way. Atlanta, Cole Watson. Atlanta, Cole Watson Hive. Atlanta and Gladewater is a really interesting game. Yeah. Then Glade, we would absolutely. Gladewater, Gladewater is two and six, but they're like the best two and six. They've team played in a crazy schedule. Yeah. yeah. But so. I'm definitely Cole Watson Hive. That Cole Watson from tech quarterback who moved in from Wascom, he runs, mm-hmm. he runs that offense. He's like a coach on the field now, but he's also, but it discredits how talented he is. Oh, as well. he's sure. a great athlete. Absolutely. All right, two more pickle. Um, non football. Let's get ready. Let's go. Yes. What you got? Favorite regional food that you cannot really get in Texas. The, the examples that they put out there were crab cakes, lamb fries, Philly cheese steaks, like that kind of stuff. Like you can obviously get those here, but they're yeah. not. It's not authentic. Yeah. I'm man. I'm a sucker for a good Philly, either a good Philly cheese steak or Chicago style pizza. Those are my, which, mm. as as a great man named Poochie once said, R.I.P. Poochie. Um, Tomato pie. It's it's uh, lasagna. Yeah, those are my two. Those are my favorites. I, do. I love it's, tomato it's pie. Favorite, as well. right? Not not mm-hmm. not disliked. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Chicago style pizza, and then a you go to Philly and get a really a good Philly cheesesteak. It hits different. 
Yeah, um, as the kids say, it slaps. I would say I would say essentially like Creole food. Yeah, like you can get it if you go to Southeast Texas yeah, and, and go stuff to Beaumont, like that. Yeah, you go to Port Beaumont, Arthur. and yeah. there's a there's a real Cajun influence. But I would say Creole food is something that I I, I miss. Um, and then, so one of the things. So most my, my wife's from St. Louis, and most of the food from St. Louis is garbage. But they are also the owners and proprietors of toasted raviolis, which you get them there, and they're just different. I don't, I've never had Isn't there, that. Is there a St. Louis-style pizza? There is, and it's terrible. Is it it's terrible? It's got Provel cheese on it, oh, which gross. is like processed white cheese. But those St. Louisans, they will swear by it. Really? It's gross. And their ribs are kind of mid, too. What's that? St. Louis-style ribs are pretty mid, too. Yeah, I mean, I, I had I had good barbecue mid. there once. There's a there's a there's one really good barbecue place up there that I enjoy. Like Memphis style had, ribs are good. But we had St. Pappy's. We went to Pappy's mm, um, in St. Louis. It was it was pretty good. Kansas City barbecue is okay. There's yeah, Kansas, Kansas City. City yeah, Kansas City is good. Really I mean, good. I mean uh, we have our Jones. rivalry, but Kansas City barbecue is I, I can eat you that can and like enjoy both, guys. it. Yeah. It doesn't have to be either yeah. or. Mm, um, big tent. Mine would be clam chowder. Like mm. the Northeast has, I'm, I'm, I'm huge. Yeah, I was chowder. just gonna say I'm huge soup say person, chowder. as y'all all know. But mm. yeah, Big soup that, girl over there. Mm-hmm. The, the clam chowder. chowder up what, there is really good. One thing, being married to a Canadian girl and living living in Canada a good portion of the year, uh, I do not like poutine. Um, poutine's trash. You're weird. Yeah, I don't like poutine at all. You're weird. You're wrong on that. Yeah. Okay. Well, you know, I've been um, wrong before. And then the final question here, and this is just for y'all. Uh, Getting married in December, what marriage advice would you give yourself just before you got married? Like those final couple weeks. What's the advice? Like just for the couple of weeks or for, for the or yeah. for the like for the mar- for the course of the marriage? Yeah. Uh, That's a good advice. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you can do both. Like in what, the first, in, for the in, first couple okay. weeks and then You have probably been stressed out about this wedding for a while. Here is the great news. There's nothing you can do anymore. Okay, this is very much to go back to my streak. Once you get on the plane, if the plane's going to crash, nothing you can do. There's something's going to go wrong at your wedding. Something's not going to go to plan. Yeah. But and you're your helpless. Get, you, and won't know, you won't know until it happens. And, and your wife's like, going to be upset. Eh, and, yeah. Just happens. Yeah, just so sit back like, and let it. Like, I, I agree. The, the, the next two weeks, just sit back yeah, and just, just, just eat Arby's, man. Yeah. You know, like it's 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 um, yeah, it's gonna happen. Whatever's gonna, gonna happen, happen is gonna there's happen. There's gonna be yeah. something. There, you know, there's a, like they're they're gonna run out of beer, or they're gonna, you know, they're gonna have, uh, you know. To, they're going to cut the cake at the wrong time or whatever. Yeah. I promise you it will be okay. As far as long-term marriage at least. Um, okay. This is my best. This is my, and this is an actual physical, real, tangible, practical piece of advice. Flowers at the grocery store are like five bucks. Okay. They're like five bucks. If you go there, and my, my grandmother was a florist, and so I'm a big believer in this. Bro, you come home with flowers five dollar flowers move the price tag but you come home with flowers like every couple weeks that is that is an investment that you are making that i promise you is going to keep you off the couch just that kind of stuff Mm. those little deposits five is the it is the the cheapest best investment you can make thoughtful exactly because like oh you were thinking of me and i think uh, pickle you're a girl right Mm mm-hmm yeah, allegedly, <laughs> somebody, somebody like pickle. You're like, a girl, right? Like <laughs> question your, mark. Your significant other sends you flowers, mm-hmm. even if they're five bucks, right? Mm-hmm. You're oh, still. That, like, it literally happened like two weeks ago. Yeah. I, I am doing long distance, and he came up to visit, and he showed up with a little bouquet of flowers, and it was the best thing in the entire right. world. Like the, mm-hmm. I knew he was coming, and he still showed up with it, and it was the best thing ever. Right. Mm-hmm. He's already thinking of you because he's coming up, but that is mm-hmm. just a little token. Yeah. And those little, I'm telling you. That I, I swear that's how I stay yeah. married. I'll say for me, it's especially with my marriage and my you know uniqueness with uh-huh. being here part of the year, that kind of thing. The Just lives. Com- yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Football being the you the know other one. he is rugged and reliable. Yeah, I am. You know, the ladies love rugged and reliable. <laughs> uh, I would say uh, communicate, like, and, and but communication works two ways, right? You can communicate verbally, and you you say what you feel, but also communication involves listening, mm. and being a good listener is is key also Bro, you know? yeah when in doubt love it <laughs> when in doubt shut up yeah be a good listener i was yeah. just fixing to say god gave I you two am, ears and one mouth so listen twice as much as you talk i am not married but if you want a woman's advice on this especially from a very very that's gonna do for us thanks for yep. no, 
<laughs> from a very, very headstrong, stubborn woman, I don't need like a lot of comforting s- very often, but every now and then I'll reach the end of my fuse and it's like, all I need you to do is just let me let it all out and then you're good to go. Stand like, there, like sit there. Literally sometimes just, all you need is someone to go, yep. If you just sit there and mm-hmm. be like, that sucks. And like your yep. feelings are valid. Like mm-hmm. you say those types of things, mm-hmm. literally like use therapy words. Yep. Like I think I feel I know. <laughs> Like those types of things, I promise it goes, you. Yeah. Yes, mm. that's that's. I don't do need that. that often, but every now and then, every couple of months, I'll hit the end of my fuse, and I Some, just need you to say, "Yep." <laughs> pardon, pardon my French here, uh, but like sometimes, sometimes your partner just needs to bitch. Yep. Okay. Just needs to complain, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like your job as the significant other, male or female, I would say. Oh yeah, absolutely. Male or female, it does go both ways. Your job is to just listen. You don't have to solve it. Your job is not to solve it. Your job is just to listen. That's a, I had to learn that as a male. Uh, as a, as a, as a dude, to, I think I could try to solve every problem. Dude, Sometimes I, I can't re- solve I every to, problem. I have to relearn that a lot, yeah, too. Because yeah. I'm just like... And like, We're like wired my wife will be like, sometimes. hey, listen, dumb, dumb. Mm-hmm. I don't need you to fix this. I need you to just shut up and listen. Well, yeah. And especially because like, okay. I, I work in an industry with all men, basically. <laughs> and <Hi>. uh, <laughs> there's a lot of times that I just don't need another. Like, if I just want to complain, I don't need a man to be trying to fix it. It's like, no, <laughs> hush. <laughs> yeah, yeah, most certainly. Anyway, that's going to do it for us. Thanks for spending Enjoy a football. Day with us. Follow us on Twitter at DCTF. Like us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Dave Campbell's. Follow us on Instagram, instagram.com slash Dave Campbell's. And of course, see us at texasfootball.com. Where are you going tonight? Uh, Mount Pleasant. Oh, that's right. I'm driving to Mount Pleasant tonight. I would have picked okay. a great day to Joe Cluley. You better be. Your, I, I better have a lot of great food waiting for me in Mount Pleasant. <laughs> Is there Pleasant. supposed to be good food? There are reports. Oh. There, are, there are reports. Yes, you'll we'll see on the tune. vlog. Yeah, you know, see the vlog. I feel like Cluley's a guy you can trust with food. On tap and stuff. He's. You can trust a man with a beard, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. That's, I think that's very true. Okay. Hey, thanks for watching this clip here on YouTube. If you like this kind of stuff and you want more of it, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And remember, you can watch us live every weekday at noon at texasfootball.com, Facebook, Twitch, or here on YouTube. And if you want more of the best coverage of football in the state of Texas, check out texasfootball.com and become a Dave Campbell's Texas Football Insider at texasfootball.com slash subscribe.